Many of the users in our ecosystem exhibit a pattern of hoarding to a certain degree with their technology because they express to you that they need to keep all of their email of all time. This inevitably leads to extremely large mailboxes and they have to reach out to us inadvertently through support cases because their mailbox has reached stored capacities. This could be directly through the messages that they're getting in Microsoft, or be indirectly through other types of support tickets where they say, my email's running really slow, or I can't send and receive email, which is the result of having a full mailbox. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some of my top tips for becoming proactive and some of the tools that you can leverage to monitor when mailboxes are over 90% full, as well as my three top recommendations for managing storage in Microsoft 365, including a tip that you may or may not know that allows you to bump up the storage for a mailbox for a user up to 1.5 terabytes without any additional licensing. So stay tuned. For those of you that don't know me, my name's Nick. I'm a Microsoft MVP, and I've been creating content here in the channel for the better half of a decade. If you haven't already, definitely like and subscribe to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Let's go ahead and dive in. As we dive in here, I quickly want to talk about some of the legacy management methods that we use for high storage within these accounts. And then I'm going to talk about some of the new modern techniques using Microsoft 365 and your existing licensing. So previously, we would talk to our end users and try to get them to use the storage section of Outlook and look for files and folders that they can maybe move into deleted or empty their junk folder, empty the deleted items, things like that to start to free up storage as a first measure of troubleshooting and basic email hygiene. In a lot of cases though, the end users would push back and say, John, what are you talking about? I need an email from 2003 because it may come up in conversation. And so you have to placate them and say, okay, let's look at some of the additional storage options we could look at here. So the second method that you may have used locally was local PST files to back up these very old emails. I'm not gonna dive into that, that's because it's too legacy. But the modern method we're gonna get into is related to in-place or online archiving that we will talk about as we talk about best practices. The third solution that you typically looked at here, and some of us may still do this today, is to look at moving and upgrading their license from a 50 gig mailbox to a 100 gig mailbox with a license like Exchange Online Plan 2 because it included that size of a mailbox. Now I'm gonna go into some of the archiving mailbox sizes as well too, but you're gonna get a real clear depiction on when that would still come into play today versus when you can move into one of these more modern solutions. In order to become proactive in managing these mailboxes, I wanna have some good reporting for mailboxes over 90% storage. I'll definitely show you where to go in Microsoft to look for this, but I also built a tool here that you can leverage and actually run a free assessment on that spits out this security report but as part of that audit, we're also looking for mailboxes over 90%. And you can see all the users in your organization, their storage use, and if they have online archiving enabled. The other benefit here is that it is multi-tenant capable. So you can see multiple organizations if you're an MSP managing downstream customers. You'd be able to see that on a per tenant basis. So definitely check this out. This is cloudcapsule.io. You can go and you can run a free assessment here against your tenant or a tenant of your downstream customer. Within the Microsoft Admin Center, there's certainly a lot of places you can go to view certain information about the Exchange mailbox. If I clicked on users though, within this portal, active users and went to a user here, you can see their storage use and you can go into learn more about storage quotas. You can also go into this Ed Exchange properties to get more information like their online archive, which we'll be getting into a little bit later. Additionally, if you go under reports and usage, you'll be able to see a more extensive report across users. If we go to mailbox usage here at the top after clicking into exchange, this will tell you how much storage is being used. And this really just gives you a quota status, which is under the limits of their quota, which is getting into that 90% storage used. The only thing I don't like about this view is it doesn't show you which mailboxes have enabled archive directly here. And of course, there's that limitation that this is just a single tenant. If you're an MSP, not a multi-tenant view that you'd be able to see kind of quickly moving across customers. As we shift here into best practices, I still think the best thing that you can do is encourage the user to have proper email hygiene in the sense of the retention 
of the emails that they do have and trying to clean up their inbox as well. So some of the ways that you can do that, again, I've showed this in the beginning here, but if you go under the settings sub and you go into storage, you'll be able to see all the individual files, folders, things like that, and the storage being used. And generally speaking, one of the easiest things you can do is go just dump your deleted item folder. By default, this is automatically clearing up after 30 days uh, for the emails that are sent into there with the default retention policies as well. But you can manage the storage here. This is a light inbox. I don't really have a lot, but in some cases, users may have added folders over time that really could have accumulated, or they may have a really large junk email box that they could empty out and get back a lot of storage as well too. The other thing that you can do in here, and this is the new Outlook, but you can use this sweep feature and you can choose to move all messages from the inbox folder, from a particular individuals, or maybe it's just buckets that you get as part of your organization. It would be good to automatically detect and move them into certain folders that maybe have different types of retention policies, maybe not necessarily deleted items. You could move that into creating your own folder and then against that folder, you can right click here and you can click on assign policy and maybe you change this to personal one year move to archive, right? So you're just setting different retention policies for the different types of email that you have. And I'll certainly have more information about this with the blog that I'll link below as well too, just so you can get into the nitty gritty details. But effectively, we want the users to get into best practices as far as cleaning up this mailbox. We all know, though, that we have a very difficult conversation in most cases when we do that. So let's take a look at some of the next options to kind of expand our mailbox capabilities. As we get into these concepts, I thought this diagram would be helpful that I made here just to help describe what we're actually doing. In most cases, most users are on a business plan, at least with the users that I'm talking to. We can get into the bigger plans, too. But effectively, they'll have a 50 gigabyte mailbox, whether that's Exchange Online Plan 1, business basic, business standard, business premium. And in a lot of cases, they'll reach a point where this is getting full. So we go in and what we're gonna show you next is how to enable an archiving feature, which is the in-place online archive. And what this does is immediately gives you another 50 gigabyte mailbox for additional storage. And then the default retention policy that Microsoft has in place, unless you've changed it, takes into effect, which automatically starts moving anything that is older than two years into the in-place archive. So this will take some time, and we'll talk about ways in which you could speed this up. Um, and when I say it takes some time, it'll take probably a 24-hour period, 48-hour period to fully get completed based off of my experience. But there are some PowerShell scripts that you can run to speed this up. But this will hopefully start to unclog this mailbox here and you can monitor that to make sure that does happen. This will then go into the in-place archive within the mailbox folder, and you'll be able to see that within the environment there. And then you can also, what we're gonna get into in the tertiary step, is turning on the auto-expanding archive, which we'll get into a little bit later, which puts into consideration for up to 1.5 terabytes of storage for this archiving box as well. So we talk about enabling the archive real quick here. If I go back to that user I was looking at, they don't really have a full mailbox, so really don't need to do this yet for them. But if you go to mail, you click on edit exchange properties, this is going to open up the exchange admin center. Within the Exchange Admin Center here, you have a couple of considerations that you can do from an admin perspective. You can also see their usage directly from here in case you just wanted to manage everything. But under Others, you do have the ability to see this Manage Mailbox Archive. And you can go ahead and just toggle the switch on, which will enable that for the user. If I look at one that I've already set up for a different user, you can name this a specific uh, name. That, and this will basically be what shows up within their Outlook environment. So let's pivot over there now to see what that looks like. So in the user's mailbox, they'll have this in-place archive show up here. And this again is what takes some propagation time to show up. In my experience, generally 24 to 48 hours. I'll link in my blog post a PowerShell script that you can run to help speed this up. But you'll notice here that it'll start copying over every single file or folder over into this location unless you've changed the default retention policy, and we'll get into that here in a second. But if you turn this on and users start to say, I don't have my notes folder anymore, I don't have this folder anymore, 
as an example, it could be that everything within that folder was two years old or greater, and it's actually now in the in-place archive. They still be able to search for it with a global search here, but you have to take note that that will happen, and they could right-click on this, and they could assign a different policy here than what is being automatically applied. And the same is true with one of these policies or folders up top here, where you say never move to archive in this sense. So they can actually control that. Obviously you want to encourage them to let the default settings take place, but you could also change the default retention policy as well. So let's pivot back into the admin center so we can see that as well. So your retention policies are really in still this compliance admin center that you need to go into. And if you go under data lifecycle management, you'll have this exchange with these legacy parentheses next to it. I assume this will kind of get deprecated over time, but this is where you're defining your retention tags. And this is all part of a retention policy. So you can have many tags in one policy and your default policy here includes the tags that we saw and the retention tags that you see here dictate the retention period, the action, and then the type. So the default ones in the sense of the type itself mean that it applies blanketly to the entire Outlook environment for the users, so all their files and folders. The junk email you'll see here as well too, it's really targeting the junk email, or in this case it's the deleted items, retention period by default is 30 days and then it will purge them from the system. So you can also set up these personal ones here and that gives the user the flexibility to assign like we were seeing in the user's Outlook environment. Now back in the Exchange Admin Center, if I go back to a user here, I can go to the Mailbox tab and I can see what default retention policy is applied, which is our default one here. And I can go into Manage Mailbox Policies and I can dictate, if I did create another one, what would be assigned to this user. So you can't dictate another policy. A good example of that is that for some reason, even if you turned on the archive for the user and it starts moving over emails that are two years or older, it's possible that still doesn't move the needle on their storage. So you may have to move it down and make the default policy for them one year instead of two years, if that makes sense, just to help free up that storage. And I've had that use case happen in the past. The next iteration we're going to talk about is really this in-place archive getting into a place where it is full as well too. You can actually see what the archive looks like if you go back into that storage section and you take a look at the in-place archive here. And actually for this account, I have 100 gigabytes provisioned for this particular user and I have Microsoft 365 Business Premium licensing assigned. And that's an interesting distinction because you do get the 100 gigabyte archive if you turn this on immediately with the user. And then if you are on Business Standard Exchange Online Plan 1, you'll just see 50 gigabytes here as well too. But we wanna have some consideration for that 1.5 terabyte uh, limit that we wanna be able to auto expand and set. And the only way that you can do that today is through PowerShell. But this goes back to our consideration here where we want to turn on auto expanding archive and then that in place archive will keep expanding when it's reaching uh, certain limits here to auto expand up to 1.5 terabytes. And that's so much storage that really I don't think that any user should have that much, but it is a limit that you can get. And this is something that you can get with specifically business premium. If we take a look at Microsoft support article on this, you'll notice that that is listed here. You also get it with your E3, E5 plans, but not necessarily for Office 365 E1. You still get this too with Office 365 E3 and E5, but again, not for business basic or business standard. So I'll link these in my blog post as well, just so you have a whole list of these articles just for supporting documentation. In PowerShell though, you have a couple commandlets that you can use and I'll link these as well where you can see who has auto expanding archive enabled. And in this particular case, if I run this, nobody does because I haven't turned it on because we haven't needed it. You can turn it on at an organizational level or a per user level. And you can just use the commandlets to dictate which one that you want to move forward with. And you can set auto expanding archive there so it keeps expanding to 1.5 terabytes. Lastly here, the final consideration that you want to have is that you should be backing up your email to a third party backup solution. 
I prefer a Cronus or a Drop Suite as an example of this. They're not paying me to say this, just by the way. Uh, these are actually products I've used and have preferred. And this is also some peace of mind for the user in the sense of their lack of wanting to delete anything because you can be restoring anything with these backups that are in a third party database. And this is really helpful because you're alleviating those concerns, but then if you do put in these more strict retention policies and efforts to go ahead and clean up user mailboxes to become more proactive, we can actually have a lot of cleanup that is done with automation through the retention policies, the in-place archiving and all of that. And you could always simply restore emails and do that on the fly if it's required, unlikely. Uh, but these are two solutions that allow you to do that seamlessly. They're both MSP tools. So just keep that in mind. You could use a variety of different third-party backups, but these are just two that I've liked and used in the past. Okay, guys, that's everything I have for you today. Definitely check out Cloud Capsule to see some of this reporting to become more proactive and reaching out to users that have full mailboxes. And as always, comment below, like, and subscribe to the channel to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. I'll see you guys next week.